so, uh, hi everybody. I'm uh, Nicolas uh, Planel from uh, Red Hat. I'm here today to, uh, to talk about uh, packet probes on eBPF in Skydive. Um, so let's start to demonstrate what is Skydive and what we design it. Uh, Skydive is a tool um, that we start like three years ago. Um, it's about uh, capturing uh, real-time events on the neural networks uh, and the protocol analyzer on your SDN. Um, the most difficult part is like uh, when you have a lot of set of tools like uh, TCP dump uh, and, uh, and so on at uh, IP. Well, you have Unix basically is a full of, uh, uh, have plenty of tools to do one things, one, one way things. But the idea is like it's very complex when you want to debug a full infrastructure on multiple hosts. Of course, you have SSH, etc. But how you organize that? How you uh, how, how you orchestrate orchestra that? And that's why your SDN is complex. Um, the topology we have physical multiple layers. You have overlay application, uh, and everything is dynamic because you don't know what customer do and what else they doing and injecting or if you have attacks or whatever. Um, you have multiple. Uh, tuning in layer as well, and many setups like if you use OpenStack or uh, you have multiple VL, VLAN, VXLAN, GRE, GNV, or the, you have very plenty of protocol for that um, for many constructors. Um, and also at the end, the infrastructure, infrastructure of, uh, uh, of your networks is very, very, uh, let's say, very verbose and very complex. So, we have multiple use cases we want to address uh, that we have in mind uh, to show you uh, the topology for the discovery. So you can see on the left, like the one of screenshots of uh, the full topology of four nodes with a um, namespace, like you can see in blue. Um, the top of rack is at the, uh, the orange, um, the orange big nodes. And the information that we can retrieve is like you know, for each node, like the NTU or for each interface, uh, you can see inside the, inside the topology. And uh, you will see as well the routing tables, the features of the, each uh, interface, um, like from the ETH tool, for example. Um, we can do flow troubleshooting. So within, the, the, within Skydive, we can have uh, start some captures it's like your IF packets uh, or eBPF probes, or you have multiple ways to capture some flows, or network flows, network traffic. Um, what describes your flow um, is um, a unique ID, is a connection. We can see more in the kernel, obviously, the SCABF, but it will be passed through the, the network with multiple packets. Um, so we change that one connection from, uh, you have its own UUID, you have a layer pass because we have a, a small classifier based on the Go packets. Uh, we analyze, we do retrieve some uh, few protocols uh, information from the Ethernet, IP, TCP, and ICMP, basically. And uh, then we have some metrics. Metrics is like on the both way of the connection. It could be like a, a number of bytes from the A to B or B to A and number of packets. Um, when the station starts, when the station uh, last packet we've seen, like we finished. And the um, um, well, most important we calculate afterwards is like the RTT, uh, run trip time that we observe uh, on the network from within the packets um, from A to B to B to, 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 B, to B to A. Uh, we had some features that we took later about just after the next slide is the tracking ID. Tracking ID is a way to uh, identify a flow within uh, multiple nodes because you can imagine the flow of uh, multiple encapsulation. It could be outside of, GRE, of uh, tunnels or in the, uh, the tunnels. Um, so that's why you have some uh, troubleshooting, like tracking the flow where it's going through your interface or your, your infrastructures. For so this example, you can see in the yellow um, that the highlighting that we pass through two namespaces um, from, uh, could be, yeah, two namespaces so to isolate uh, programs. They're talking to each other, like ping, for example. And we saw that it passed through a bridge and a tunnel. Well, you cannot see the tunnel here on the description. 
But the idea is like you can track outside of the tunnel and inside the tunnel the same flow thanks to the tracking ID. Um, we can do the use case of monitoring. Uh, thanks to Grafana, we did a, build, a, a plugin that you can express afterwards um, like the sum of your traffic flows that you selected within the infrastructure. So it could be on multiple hosts, you can add um, all the traffic from, uh, for example, from ICMP or whatever TCP ports you want to uh, have monitor. Um, example, like you can sum up the load balancing. Uh, another use case is a workflow. Um, the idea is like, uh, because Skydive, as I show you, is just a UI screenshot, but Skydive is a toolbox and you have API. Uh, the workflow that you can address, we can call Within the AI, you can inject uh, some scripts, and the scripts can describe what you want to do to uh, do validation. For example, if you have one host, you can start a capture from one interface to another interface, and they, with the shortest path, in between the nodes, and we start the capture all the lengths. All the, all the nodes within the path will be started a uh, flow capture, and you will retrieve the, the flow afterwards. You can query with a language named uh, Kremlin, uh, and you can retrieve um, the, what you expect to see, or if it happens. For example, you can send some packets, uh, ICP, ICMP packets with an ID, a special ID, and retrieve afterwards if you can check, oh, if this ID passed through all the nodes I, I suspect. So did you have connectivity in between two nodes, or in between, and um, what, well, you can even have more complex, uh, what's the MTU in between two nodes? For debugging is very easy, but imagine you have multiple, multiple namespace, how you can achieve that uh, with OVS and etc. So within Skydive, you can express that very easily. I wish you later more and deeply how we do with Gremlin. Um, so Skydive in action is looking like that, that uh, um, G3GS, well, I'm sure is a lot of fun of JavaScript here. <laughs> And um, so it's a just quick animation of what we do, or just what describe and starting captures, and injecting this time, we can inject some packets, we inject some AICMP between two nodes. And we start the capture from one, 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 one node to another node, and you see the pass. Voila. So the idea is like you can uh, try. Uh, yes, sorry. What uh, does the movement mean? Uh, does it represent something? Uh, it's basically, it's uh, regard. Uh, yeah. I, I was just asking. Yeah, yeah. Things are moving. Does it have any significance? Uh, moving, you mean uh, when you click the the, the graph? Yeah, the graph is a little bit wobbly. It's like meaning because it's like a D3GS engine, so you have a physical engine on the background. So it's a little bit wobbly when the nodes uh, expand uh, because uh, you can see like this, they just expand and uh, you, a little bit wobble. It's not the best view. We try to improve it because it could be very very verbose and it could be very more complicated. We have another view about that, so uh, under development still, but. Um, that the D3GS effect, so basically. Um, so it's a, just a quick uh, skydive in action. Uh, what I said before, like we have a Gremlin API. Oh, maybe uh, yeah, miss a slide. So skydive architecture is like based on a graph engine, so the art of uh, skydive, basically. Uh, we have multiple probes, it could be topology probe or flow probes, and we inject everything on the, on the graph. Like uh, all the nodes, all the uh, could be queries and with metadata, like you can imagine for each node you have a key value, and you can query with a language name um, and through API uh, named Gremlin. And Gremlin is a graph, uh, graph engine uh, language. Uh, you can see, it was described, uh, um, one, of, one of the implementations is Tinkerpop, uh, you can find an Apache, but we did redo the same implement for special reason, we can talk about it later. Uh, we redo the same keywords language within Skydive. We redo the implementation a part of. Um, for example, this one is like uh, we can call the, within the client. Um, an API is the REST API, but we have a CLI as well. Uh, a graph engine is, is described like a G.V 
for all the VSTs of the graph as name ETH0. So you can see on this example, well, just a, a small screenshot. Uh, all the interface within your infrastructures have the name ETH0, whatever is in the, within the namespace, outside the namespace, one host, one other. Uh, you can you have other use cases as well, just like tra tracking. It's like, for example, the, the one I use, um, I show you the screenshots. The basically, the, um, that we do in the UI is uh, calling the API with a G flow as tracking ID, this tracking ID. And it show you the path, like the, that you, how we highlight the path. Um, for the monitoring, is the GFlow as application that we put in the Grafana, um, uh, in the Grafana uh, plugin. And we just select all the flows that have the application IPv4 has been captured, and we get back the matrix and aggregate it and show, and show to you. Um, internally, what all you organize is like a single binary uh, skydive, so you don't need to, uh, it's not complicated to deploy, it's uh, for the agent and for the analyzer. So there are two parts, the agent running on each host, on the root node. Um, the analyzer could be have one or multiple if you want uh, backup, like uh, obviously copy, uh, 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 copy the data in between. Uh, all the agents into the, all the analyzers. And we save that in database, that the new feature that we have in the graph, that all the event happens, whenever all the flow is saved, will be saved in the database. So we can go back in time to find uh, an issue, like for operational people, it's like very important. We go on the customer call and say, where, where in my VM, for example. Um, you can go back in time and see what changed. Or even if you change a, f a few parameters, like MTU, you can f find that easily because you have an event and the node metadata will be updated. And you can go back in time to, to see where there's a problem. Or charts. I don't think you have a, anyone want to chart uh, MTU of interface, but never know. <laughs> um, so you have a, a bunch of uh, topology probes uh, to doing that for the topology. Uh, we based on Netlink, Namespace, OVS Docker, or all the OpenStack, Neutron, or Kubernetes. And a special one I will talk later is a socket info. Um, but uh, what we do is like um, capturing the probes. Uh, we have different methods. They have uh, IF packets or BPF or eBPF. So IF packet, everybody knows is like uh, the big M map. We receive all the packets. That we do is like we classify uh, all the flow based on a, a Go packet classifier, the um, third party project. Uh, that we today retrieve all the metadata that we have in, uh, we have interest, like uh, RTT, uh, layer pass, um, all the information that, you, that we need. But obviously, you have a big overhead when you do that on 10 gig links. It's even not available, possible to do that on one CPU, on one map, you need to uh, find out. Um, BPF, we have uh, found a, a, quick, a quick filter that we can trick to say, I will just would like the first packet is the last packet from a TCP session. <laughs> so, uh, so, um, <laughs> worse than me, I have a phone and I'm calling, but <laughs> I did that two days ago, so, <laughs> well, yesterday. Um, uh, so BPF is like uh, we are able to have a start of the end of the TCP session, but you only apply to TCP, obviously, because uh, for based on the flags, uh, we cannot retrieve uh, packet metrics from the from the from the flow, uh, from the network flow. Um, we found on, another solution is to inject with small probes, like if based on eBPF. Um, it's not supported in all kernels, as you know, everybody know, or whatever. It's like on the latest one is right. Uh, maybe in a hell 7.6 or ish. Um, but uh, we, the, the, the probe is very limited to uh, the way today because we didn't do classification within the kernel. It's quite complicated. Uh, as it, on the other hand, eBPF is like, uh, thanks to eBPF, we cannot do loops, so the algorithm is uh, uh, complexity just O1. Uh, you didn't support fragmentation or tuning. Um, that's all the features that you have in F packets. Like we have a TCP assembly, uh, out of order packets will be reordering. Uh, all the 
network uh, tricks that the TCP stack Linux to do, for example. Um, so basically how we organize the eBPF probes that we inject in the kernel, that the one uh, flow table that we create uh, per capture, uh, thanks to the socket hook of uh, eBPF, uh, where we receive all the packets of the session. Uh, we calculate quickly a session key based on uh, all the, the layers we can have, the basic layers, like IP, uh, Ethernet IP TCP, for example. Um, we can't, we just calculate the key, and we just, this is a big map that we put the packet counters of the session and the, and the session size, so the sum of the packet length, or TCP payload length. Um, we send this full table in, a, in Skydive, on, on top of Skydive in userland, we do, uh, calculate the UID, that I say is like the unique ID in the whole infrastructures, so it's like unique numbers. Uh, tracking ID is a little bit tricky, but it's it basically is a session, uh, session hash key. And uh, the most important is that Skydive do that afterwards to map that in the topology nodes. That way is a little bit magic between flow and nodes, because we know which nodes we capture, and uh, we map all the data. So if you can imagine like two, two different worlds just merge on the one node, and afterwards your gremlin will help you to do what example I gave you before. Um, on other things like we do with the Caprom and uh, uh, features that we implement in Skydive, is like with the uh, uh, and probes, uh, so, uh, we inject some probes um, on the eBPF that we can retrieve the TCP uh, uh, on the UTP session uh, directly from the kernel. So you receive, uh, you, you retrieve, sorry, um, they retrieve the connection uh, port from one host and the, and the port, the connection port uh, IP uh, from one host to another host with the binaries. So you know the, pre the, well, the, pre the process name and the binaries as well, but um, you can map afterwards, we have this, tool on top of uh, Skydive, as just a script, uh, that do the, all the query within uh, Skydive, and which make you uh, lives uh, more simple or to map in between um, two processes from two different hosts and uh, full infra infrastructures to say, as I talk to each other on this port, and afterward you can map the flow that ma match that. So you can start a capture, for example, on the path of uh, in between two processes. Another thing you can do is you can have an application view and service view of uh, the topology of processes in between uh, a big project, like OpenStack, that's just a part of. Uh, like OVSDB talk to OVSDB, OVSDB client to talk to the server, obviously, but Neutron over DHCP, et cetera, uh, talk uh, to each other, and you see in each way with MySQL and the background, uh, RabbitMQ, uh, we just filter out a part just to show you, because otherwise it's pretty complicated to show. Um, that's um, uh, uh, a kind of feature you can do on top of Skydive. And and the flow matrix scripts that we have on uh, our Git, our GitHub uh, repository. Um, for Skydive for the future, the roadmap um, that we try, we will plan to do have hybrid captures. Basically, it's like uh, have a eBPF probe sending back, sending packet to user lands to classify. So you have the full stack uh, with the GRE, with the tunnels, where it's a little bit complex to, to uh, classify the flows. And once it's classified, we just continue to counting the packets that we do today, but just by flagging back the say which um, the, which uh, packet uh, flow uh, session, which session uh, network session uh, we continue to just counting the counters, but to update the counters. Um, we plan as well to have uh, more features from the kernels, like uh, with the BBF cap probes to, to retrieve fragmentation from the the, net, uh, the TCP stack from the host or fragmentation or other counters, interesting for the, for the networks. And uh, have a special tricks to have events uh, from the namespace, but because we are very interested by receive an event from, uh, uh, from a, when a new namespace is created on host. Today it didn't exist on the kernel, we need to uh, scan slash proc, so it's not 
is not the best, but we that all we will retrieve the namespace from uh, all the all the namespaces created already. Um, we have a, a feature as well as to extract the graph engine that we have a, uh, a pull request already to. Uh, um, because the skydive is based on the arts of a, a, a graph engine, and we, many people would like to use it, but on its own project. It's not all I show you is skydive is related to, to network, basically, but today you have a graph engine with database, so you have this history that you can use on your own project. It's very easy to implement your own probes or your own way to inject nodes on a relationship in between. Uh, that we expose, like uh, the, the, the graph engine is named Stafy. I don't play. And um, it could be integrated in your tool in the way that you want. And you can use it even with the language, Gremlin language, will be exposed. You can add some extension as well, like socket info, or I don't know why, what, what we would like to, to, uh, to implement. Uh, we got lots, lots of ideas from many uh, operators or because they have their specific probes they have, would like to integrate in a graph to have the metrics from a, a, a top of rack of everything like that. Or it could be even a relationship in between objects. Uh, could be like a, a user talking to each other and which group play working together, etc. Um, so basically, that's it. If you have any question. No. <laughs> Is that the end of the weekend <laughs> and the mic? <laughs> so I uh, will start. Uh, yeah. Are you expecting doing yourself the uh, PR to the Linux kernel to do the uh, eBPF uh, changes you are needed? Um, eBPF is user land. So you inject the code in the in the kernel. So is a user space. Uh, is, a, is a elf binaries that you inject in the kernel. Okay. So the, we do already, but we be updated for. Okay. To have the the, the feature. Okay, Normally, so you have yeah, you already have all the API in the kernel to do that. Thank you. <coughs> Hi. Yeah. First, thanks for the for the tool. Um, just a simple question to be sure. Uh, if I just code a probe, I could just use the graph engine for myself? For anything else? Uh, yes, if you use the uh, import of, uh, you write the tool in Golang uh, in Skydive. So if you import the, the once, once the, P, the pull request will be merged soon, a couple of weeks, uh, you will be will able to import just the, the graph engine. So that wouldn't be limited to the network? Uh, no, aspect. it's not limited to the network, as I say, yeah. You That's can what it is. As, as you want. Mm. It's just a graph engine with a database background mm. when you go historical and okay. API. As a size project, I'm currently also working on integrating uh, much more hardware loadable info, uh, storage information also. So I'm, I'm also on this path to reuse all this tooling to do some uh, uh, Play flat checking on also platform debugging. So maybe you could have some interest in your case, I don't know. And just one more. Um, did you think of a standardized uh, way of uh, pushing information for applications to enrich the, the graph somehow, the service graph? Um, you have an, well, we have already an API to inject some nodes in the, in the generic way, let's say, the key value because you put some metadata by, per node, so you mm -hmm. can create new nodes and inject key values. I would say it's like quite generic. Um, okay. And you can retrieve by the API, so yeah. Mm. It's really up. Typically, in my case, I'm working on Ceph, and one of my ID is I have all of my nodes which are monitored by this tooling, and then as I'm propagating the Ceph metadata into the system, I can say I, can, I just want to see the cluster which is named Toto, and then all the other nodes are just uh, vanishing, and then I'm just focusing on this self cluster. So yes, you can, you will be able to, to put your own application mm -hmm. metadata into it to do your own filtering. Sounds like a plan.
I'm, I'm not sure I understood correctly, but you said that you just do capture in eBPF and no kind of classification. Um, yes, uh, the simple classification for the first key, for the key. We didn't uh, do classification afterwards. Um, I mean, in these slides, we're using just a small classifier, like. But it could be, uh, yeah, one thing we can use in the kernel work, we can improve in the kernel, is like the dissectors, because these are the new projects, and it will be interesting to use the kernel dissector within the eBPF probe, for example. I forgot to mention those. I think it's mentioned. Well, yeah, well maybe it's okay. mentioned one slide, okay. but I did. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.